Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia La Pacho here in Paraguay and um, I just addressed this first. Many of you know that uh, I've had a loss in the family just very recently which is why there were no videos yesterday and so the vi today's videos are going to be a little bit shorter than usual and um, yeah well I know this is the second video of the day. Uh, it's the first one that I record, though. I do re I record um, this one first, just because it's it's easier to set it up like that. So I'm hopefully able to put that aside. And I know I know I said this a couple of weeks ago because uh, you know there's, I've had some things going on for a while. Um, the whole point of gaming is that we can is is to bring us happiness and enjoyment and also escape so that we can escape some things and we can sort of concentrate on things that tend to make us a little bit happier so i'm going to do my utmost to bring my usual sort of level of cheerfulness to the episode and we will sort of see how it goes um my weekly question for this week we have a large pile of cash at the moment $337,000. Now, $337,000 may not be very much money to some of you. However, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a fair slice. So, um, we need to do something with it. I, I can't just sit with $337,000 in the bank and not do anything with it. So, we need to do something with it. So, my question is, do you want me to buy some more land? We've got uh, various bits of land here. We've got packages of land here. We've got land up there. We've got land down the side. We've got everything south of the plateau down here. We've even got one solitary single little field over here on its own. What do you want me to buy? Do I buy some land? And if so, which fields do I buy? Or do I buy some machinery? And if you want me to buy machinery, what machines would you like to see me add in to this little playthrough that we're doing, this little series? There are all kinds of machinery available. There is all kinds of things that we could do with the machinery. What do you want to see? What do you want to see here on this map? So not only is it your vote and your game, and you need to get into the comment section down below and uh, tell us why you're voting for the one that you're voting for, but also I would very much appreciate it this week if you could get into the comment section and tell us what you want me to spend that money on. If you're voting for land, by all means, in the top right-hand corner, you'll be able to vote. But when you've done so, get into the comment section and tell me which fields it is that you want me to buy. Which fields do you think I should buy? You know, just saying land is all well and good. But you need to have further control over this. You need to have further input. So, get into the comment section and tell me what fields you want to see. And the same goes for machinery. If you're, if you're saying machinery, that's all well and good, but machinery could mean anything. If you say machinery, I could just go here into the shop and I could think, right, well, people want machinery. Okay, let's get some machinery. Let's line up 17 headers on the ground. That's machinery. I'm not sure that's really what you're going to be after, though. So I need you to tell me what it is that you want. What machines do you want? Um, this is an autoload wood trailer for those of you who are asking about that we've got all kinds of different machines that we're able to buy which do you want to see what would you like to see here on this map now then we're going to just unhitch this one here and there we go right just come out from under there there we go now we're going to head over to well we will be in a minute we're not going to do it just yet we will be heading over to the biogas plant very shortly and we're going to go and move a little bit more silage now i'm not actually sure what silage we're going to move because when we brought a full trailer load of silage back last time threw it in for the cows didn't actually go very far at all did it yeah that there was not very much space taken up by the silage that we put in for the cows I'm thinking that I don't want to put all the silage from the biogas plant in over here for the cows. I want to put food, uh, the, you know, the food that we got over here for the cows and let them have that. Rather than giving them a whole load of extra food because, I don't know, it, it kind of feels a little bit wasteful. We got all of that silage and we spent all that time and effort putting that silage in there. And now we're just going to give it all to the cows. I don't really want to do that. I would rather... Um, sell it that that was the whole idea why are you still acting like you're down in the ground 
not really sure why it was doing that, but it was, and now it's not. So that's the important thing. It's no longer doing it. So we'll come up through here and try to avoid walloping the trees as we go racing along. We want to take this one back home, and uh, is there another trailer up here? Or did I already take that trailer back home? I think I already took that trailer back and... No, actually, I think I took it and I sold it. You know, I honestly don't remember now. I'm sure I did something with it. So we're going to take this one back, and that's the machinery sort of tidied up a little bit. We've got the sugar cane is ongoing. We want to go and sell a bit of silage. We've got some ploughing that we need to finish off over in the field there that we're going to be planting some grass in. So this seed drill here is no good for that. We're going to have to use one of the other seed drills. I think we've only got one now. I think we've only got the absolutely enormous great big seed drill, which might be a little bit tricky getting the grass in the corners. We need to build a pen somewhere for the horse, and then we want to get hay and water there for the horse as well. That's got to be taken care of, and we've got to start working up on the plateau up on the top. So we do have a fair slice of work that we've still got to do. I know that I went and built that great big shed over there, um, and now I seem to be parking all the machinery back outside again. That's purely because I'm lazy, and um, I, I will eventually get around to putting everything away. I promise. I will. I really, really will. Now, we want to go through here. This one here, I'm still thinking we'll probably end up getting rid of that. Not quite sure yet. Anyway, the important thing today is the big bud. Now, it has been pointed out that perhaps this isn't particularly realistic. Because a trailed lifter on a ripper like this, considering how many spikes it's got on this thing, um, is going to put an incredible amount of strain on a trailed lifter. Uh, it would be a lot of strain on the lifter itself and also on the drawbar pin. So I would like to address a couple of those issues. Now this is not a homemade one. This Gregoire Besson is actually a factory produced one. Um, I have seen one of these being used only once in real life and yes it may have some slight issues about uh, strength of the machine um, but it's all easily addressed. You can see this one is fairly well made. It's um, It's got all sorts of extra plates welded in for additional strength and we've because we're using such an enormous weight on this thing we've also done some of our own modifications and increased the amount of strength around the lifters on here they've used specially hardened steel for it uh, so around there I'm confident that this one would be just as strong as the back of an actual tractor itself then the other point that was raised is that this here it's putting a huge amount of stress on this piece here now when I've used machines in the past that use a huge amount of pressure on the drawbar pin itself, I've, you know, I've never encountered a drawbar pin break. You know, if you just use ordinary steel and you make your own drawbar pins, then yes, maybe they would. But this drawbar pin here is one that is made of specially hardened steel, and it's a, a dual. There's like there's two types of steel. One is like a the middle piece in the, the piece in the middle is extremely hard and it, it doesn't bend very easily and then you've got an outer casing of a different type of steel that's slightly flexible and the two of them I think it's that way around it might be the other way around no I don't think it is you know I honestly don't remember it's one or the other there's there's both types of steel in it and there's a core of one whether the core is a slightly flexible one and then the outer outer core is the, the non-flexible or the other way around um, I think it's the other way around because the outside gives ever so slightly but the core of it stays absolutely rock solid. Um, but what it does is allows a much greater amount of pressure to be placed on it without it actually breaking. It increases the amount of pressure and those types of drawbar pins you can go and buy them or you could you know you could try and make one yourself I, I would recommend you that you buy it because trying to make it yourself unless you know all about how to smelt steel um, it, it's a little bit tricky but they are incredibly expensive. There's no doubt about it. And then you've also got the same super hardened steels around here on the drawbar itself. Um, they can withstand incredible amounts of pressure like you wouldn't believe. And they are a little bit more expensive than standard. But, you know, when you're using a machine like this, you would know that you would need something a little bit more expensive and a little bit more robust. And so you would go and you would act, you, you'd spend out the money on them. 
and I have used machines that have used really, really toughened drawbar pins before, and I have never encountered one that has actually broken. This just never, ever happened. I've never known a drawbar pin to break. Not one of the hardened steel ones. I have seen plenty of drawbar pins break just on normal trailers, normal use, when um, just using a, an ordinary steel one that has been self-manufactured on the farm. Um, mainly because it cost all of about, ooh, I would say maybe a pound to manufacture it themselves. You know, they, they just in the workshop put the mechanical saw going and, and slice a, a length of steel bar and then put a little bend in the end of it and there's your pin. Right, job done. It took all of 30 seconds to make and it cost about a pound. Um, a drawbar pin like I've just described is going to set you back a very large sum of money. You're talking 60, 70 quid. Maybe more than that even because of just how strong it's got to be. Um, and that that's like the, the, the top end range. And you wouldn't really need to use that very often unless you're using something like this setup. Uh, but they, they do exist. You can get pins that are super tough, super hard and steels. And they can be, there's all kinds of different reasons that you might want to use something like that. Um, one example, if you've seen the Zunhammer, Zunhammer, I can't remember really, is it Zunhammer? I, I'm not sure. Um, the, the slurry spreaders, you know the ones that I mean. You, you already know the ones that I mean. This, uh, where are we? Slurry tanks right here. Zun, I think it's Zunhammer. But you have that one, and then you've got this cultivator piece that goes on the back of it as well. Now, you've got quite a lot of weight in that thing, and you stick the cultivator on the back, and that's dragging through the ground. You've got this one here, which is a, a deeper um, cultivator. You stick that on there, and you've or you've sort of increased by... You know, quite dramatically increased the amount of work that is needed to be done by the draw pin. So you would need to use a much stronger draw pin to do something like that, especially with the wider um, cultivator setups. And that's all done on the draw pin on the tractor. So there is a situation where you would need a much stronger draw pin than, uh, you know, than you would normally. Even just doing silage, if you're running around with 18 to 20 ton silage trailers on the back of your tractor and you're working a lot of steep ground, you're going to need a fairly robust drawbar pin because um, it's going to start putting some insane amounts of pressure onto the actual drawbar itself. So I feel that we are doing this fairly realistically. Now, you could argue that this one is perhaps a little bit too big because we are ripping through virgin ground here, so there's going to be a lot of roots and stuff like that. And yes, it, I believe it is a valid argument that this might be a little bit too much for this one and that perhaps we should be using the smaller ripper and not this huge great big one. However, for um, the sake of moving things along and not getting too tedious, I feel it would be better if we just stuck with this bigger machine here and um, said, yeah, you know what, it'll be alright. So, yes, I, I do hear your concerns and I hope that I've addressed them. So, I, I would say that we're doing this reasonably realistic even if it's not a hundred percent realistic anyway that aside we're nearly done here and then once we're done here we're going to I'm not sure if I'm gonna bother going over this with the cultivator to be honest um, we've done the cultivating over a lot of it one of the machines that a lot of people have been asking me to buy for those of you who've been voting for machine is a new cultivator something is a little bit bigger and yes, I concur, a bigger cultivator would not hurt. But I think for this one here, we're not actually going to bother cultivating. We'll just get the direct drill and whip straight through with that one. And it should run through fairly quick and easy. Just drop that one down in there. And once we've ploughed this little bit, I think we'll the, the next thing we do will be to do the... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The drilling. Drilling. I was going to say sowing, but drilling was the word I was actually looking for and um, yeah once we've done we, we'll probably do the drilling next uh, and then once we have drilled the grass in here then we will go over to the biogas plant which at this rate is probably going to be next week now um, and we'll sell the rest of the silage over there we've also got the crops and I haven't forgotten that I was supposed to increase the 
uh, amount of corn that we got in the silo. Well, I, I did forget. I've only just remembered. And so I, I actually forgot to do it before the start of today's episode. So, um, yes, I'm supposed to have increased the amount of corn that we've got in the silo because uh, our computer, the sensors aren't reading on the silo that they read wrong. And turns out we got more in there than we thought. Um, but, yeah, it was a, si a simple uh, computer error. That's all it was. Sen sensor glitch or something like that. Um, I'll make sure I've got that done ready for next week. Just remind me in the comment section, actually, because I'll probably forget anyway. So just remind me in the comment section to make sure that I properly adjust the corn levels in the silo. And then we've got everything that we need in there. And then next week we can sell some of that corn for a little bit more money. We can have money coming in left, right and center. Now, the big question that I've got right now is if I go over this bit... First of all, I'm ploughing it up, but is it go is the roller, the new rolled texture, is that going to stay or is that going to change? And also, what colour is it going to go? Uh, looks like it goes back to the default colour of the map. So it goes, it'll go back to field and then hopefully when we come through and we drill it with grass, the grass will grow there and it won't be something different. I don't really want it to be... A, just a little bare patch I'm, actually, I'm really really hoping that it's not going to end up being a bare patch because that would be really really frustrating and I really really don't I'm saying really a lot today I've noticed that all of a sudden I'm very conscious of the fact that I've said it like 35 times in the last two minutes um, so yeah I, I would uh, particularly appreciate the game not doing that to me and having um, no grass growing in that little patch so we'll keep hold of the roller just for now in case we've got to go back over this and like put the grass back down. I think there are ways to do it. I'm just not entirely sure how it works. As that's a mechanic that I've not really played around with on that roller. But we'll find out very shortly. But yes, it does... Yeah, it's almost certain. We did go over quite a big chunk of it. Yeah, it's, it's going back to the default texture on the map. It's not going to a different coloured soil or anything like that. So it should, in theory now just be uh, freshly ploughed ground and turn it all into grass so we shouldn't have any issues with this whatsoever and we've actually almost finished i'm thinking that we don't want to spend the entire episode just doing this though because we're going to have to do a little bit more of this up on the plateau in probably a week or two's time once we've gotten rid of the trees up there getting rid of the trees will be fairly quick i'm going to go through and i'm going to do that as quickly as possible the stumps the trees the whole lot I'm going to get rid of those as rapidly as I possibly can. We're not going to worry about keeping timber or anything like that. A few of the trees we're going to chuck over the side so that we can play around with the crane and loading them up. But we're not doing very many of those. Most of it we are just going to chop it straight down and be done with. And I may even just forget about chucking any of the trees over the side altogether and we'll do that another time with a different area of branches or uh, trees or something like that. Um, it might just be easier because then we can hurry up and get that area up there planted with what we're going to plant. In the comments, just let me know if you think we should do potatoes or sugar beet up there. I'm, I'm still torn between the two. I'm thinking potatoes would be a better one rather than the sugar beet because there are the, well, there's the new small trailed potato harvester. And then we can use the sugar beet later on. We could maybe do that in another field. But I don't know if they grow sugar beet very much in uh, Paraguay. Uh, so if anybody is watching from Paraguay, is sugar beet a crop that you guys grow down there in Paraguay? Because um, i got absolutely no idea. That, that's something that I've got genuinely no clue about at the moment. If I lift this one, we'll bring this one on round. And we'll stop right here. Just going to switch that engine off. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to flick through to the sugar cane over here. Stop that one a second. And then we're going to go back through. I'll press X. Fold that one up like that. I might actually just get this strip in a second. Once we've emptied out this trailer now, I'll get that strip, remove it. And then we can set it carrying on doing what it was doing. So I want to come right in. You've got to come in nice and tight to the trailer with the tractor so that the trailer on the back which is offset ever so slightly will reach as well there we go beautiful so we'll dump that one in there and right getting a nice lot of sugar cane off of here 
Uh, the last lot we took to the factory and the lot before we took to the factory, we've got to keep an eye on the prices for our next load and see what's going to happen with that because I suspect that we're going to have to go and sell it somewhere else. I don't think we've actually sold any sugar cane in any, any location other than the sugar cane. Oh, no, we did. We did, didn't we? We sold some of it at... Hang on. I want to go like that, I think. Yeah. We sold some of it in... Oh, uh, via the train. We loaded up a load of the stuff that we did last time and sold it via the train. So we'll bring that down through there. That's actually really cool the way that works. I do. I I like the actual mechanic of the um, the sugar cane. It's just it does take a little bit of time, doesn't it? It's a very time-consuming process. I'm not sure that I would want to do a huge field of this manually. I know that um, when this map first came out, I did a very, I did one single time lapse on this map. It wasn't this particular save, uh, but I did one single time lapse on the map, to sort of showcase the new stuff that was coming through. And we did do some sugarcane on there, and I was very conscious of the fact when I was recording it that it was incredibly time consuming and not the most exciting of jobs doing the sugarcane. And I did read... Where was it I seen? I think it was on the Facebook pages. Somebody was uh, talking about using it on a four times map. And they got things set up on a four times map. And they were doing a sugarcane harvest over... Uh, the, I think the fields were nearly the size of a standard map. So basically everything you can see here was just a couple of fields all sugarcane. Everything was just big flat fields all sugarcane. And they were busy harvesting that fair play to them let them carry on but that is not something that i want to get involved with and it's definitely not something i'm planning on making anything out of a, into a series that's, that's not going to happen we're not doing that that's that's just too much even for me and i've done some fairly lunatic things now if we've got that going i think we will go and actually you know what i think we'll I feel like we should complete the task today i think this is what we need to do we need to complete this task here so if we get this one done I know I said that I didn't want to do all the same stuff all the time, but now thinking about it, I think maybe we ought to just, just finish this bit off. It's not going to take very long. And then that bit is done. We can take the ripper and we'll go and park that up somewhere. And then that will be ready for doing the work up on the top of the plateau. And that is the bit that is really going to put some strain on this one because there's going to be a lot of tree roots in the ground up there. We're going to do our best to rip out a whole load of them. All the stumps will be removed. They'll all be gone, so they're not going to be an issue. But there is still going to be a lot of tree roots left in that piece up there. I and mean, look at all those trees. That, that land up there has never been ploughed up. That is going to take an awful lot of work. Well, it would take an awful lot of work if you were doing it in real life. Just put it that way. So if you were doing that in real life... You would be there for a very, very long time trying to get your way through it. Just bring this one on round. Into the ground and away we go again. We've only got this little tiny triangle. It's not going to take long. We'll be able to do this and sell a lorry load of um, silage as well. We'll take that one over to the silage pit again and we'll park it up in the next bay like we did last time. And then we can blow in one load of silage sell it. How much are we going to sell the silage for? Something I haven't looked at, actually. We go back through here, and then we go to silage. Silage, there. Barn, 411. Biogas plant, 408. So it would actually be better for us if we take it to the barn this time, so maybe we will do that instead, rather than selling it right there um, at the biogas plant. That's fine, because we haven't sold a load of silage down at the barn before. It's always good to do something new. Just whiz this one on round. Get that one there. And... Right. It's always quite satisfying just finishing off that last little bit. And at the same time, when you're in a hurry, when you want to get the job done quickly, it's also slightly annoying having the triangle because you've got so many turns that you've got to do right at the end just to finish off that little bit. It just it starts to get a little bit frustrating as you sort of work through the last piece of the triangle like, right, I've done that bit, now I've got to turn around again, and then I've got to turn around again. I'm not feeling that frustration today with the, the short pieces, but I know I have felt it in the past. At times, there's definitely times when you start to get a little bit frustrated at the amount of turns you've still got to do on a triangle. 
Um, today, however, it just feels quite satisfying as we're just slowly, slowly working our way across. So I reckon two more passes will do it. One pass up will take out most of it, and then one pass back will just finish off all the rest of it. And then we've got this next field is all done. And we can either turn this into silage or we could turn it into hay. I think hay would be the best way forward. I don't think we want to turn this area here into silage. Um, I've missed a little bit back there. That's all right. We'll go and get that in a second. Um, I'm actually thinking about it. I'm actually thinking that it might be better if we were to do this as uh, grass. If we just got a forage wagon. Oh, no. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I'm looking at cows. Uh, because you've got, I think grass is something that you've got to put in anyway. Grass. Oh, no, grass doesn't get used up while you've got power food in there. Is that, is that right? I think that's the case. If you've got power food, uh, fresh grass doesn't get used up. But you can't have fresh grass being taken as the hay. But we need to put power food in there anyway. So, yeah, I think making hay would probably be the best way. Because I know that you've got to work it a couple times with a couple different machines. But it's still quicker to make than either making a clamp full of silage or making um, bales of silage and wrapping them all up. It's, it's the wrapping that takes the time. Wrapping is definitely a time-consuming process. Just get that last tiny little bit there. There we go. And job done. There we go. We now have a field that is all ploughed and ready to roll. So we're not going to do the... Um, the other bit, the, the, the planting of the grass. We're not going to do that today. We will do that next week. I'm just going to bring this one over here. Make sure I turn off the allow create fields while I'm driving around on this bit. Let's just park him up there a minute. And he's fine. He uses fuel at a fair rate. He's still got 1,200 litres of fuel on there, but he is using it up at a fair rate. Now we'll take this one over to the BGA. We're going to load up one load in here. We're going to go and sell it, and then we are going to call it a day. And like I said, I apologize for doing a slightly shorter episode than usual, but um, circumstances have dictated that uh, it's probably a good idea. Um, what else was I going to say? There was something else I was going to say. Just come out on round here. Um, I do really, really want to say thank you very much to all the support that has come in from absolutely everybody. For those of you who are a little unsure, Go on to the community page on the main channel and explain it more there. I don't really want to go into detail now because some people may not want to um, talk about it too much, um, which is fair enough because it's it's quite an upsetting subject for quite a lot of people. Um, but for those of you who've been over to the community section and you've offered support and understanding it's been absolutely amazing i can't thank you enough you really have absolutely made a huge difference to me it really has it has been incredible and really i thank you so much for all of the support that has been shown and i really really do appreciate it i really do let me just park that one up there and i need to flick through now so that we can get back over to I should have gone the other way. There we go. Right, now we start this bad boy up here. Am I lowered down to the ground? Yes, I am. And we just start going through and filling. And there's still quite a lot of silage in here. Silage fill level 610,000. So we've got a huge quantity of silage in here still. Which means that we have a huge quantity of money in here still. Because that is the, that is the main thing that we've got here. This is money. It's all about the cash. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to back up a little bit and just get that little stripe in the middle. Take that down through there, like that. And then we come up to there. Look at that. Look at the money that is pouring in through into the neighbouring trailer. This is absolutely brilliant. We are going to make ourselves a fortune, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to make ourselves an absolute fortune. We are going to be rich beyond our wildest dreams. Well... Maybe not quite rich beyond our wildest dreams, but we're certainly going to have a little bit more cash than we started out with today. Uh, we are, what is it? It's $411 per thousand litres, isn't it? Uh, $413 per thousand litres now. Okay, so the money is going up. The, the price is increasing. If I was to fast forward time a little bit, actually we could do that because I'm in the middle of doing the sugarcane harvest. 
I could get away with fast forwarding time a little bit. I don't want to do it too much, but if we were just to jump forward like an hour or something, we could make a little bit of money. We just stop there. Turn you off a minute. And right, I'm going to speed up time like that. And then I'm just going to go in here and we're going to take a look at this one. Look at that. That's racing skywards. We're only we're going to go forward an hour, maybe two. So we will wait until it says two o'clock. We'll slow down. We'll take a look at the price again. It says half past one. What we're actually doing, just in case you're wondering, we're not fast forwarding time because uh, we're not um, omnipotent. Um, we are, we're just having a cup of coffee. That's all we're doing. We're just having a cup of coffee and time lapsing that little bit. There we go. So we've had our cup of coffee and now we're being off 445. Okay, that is pretty good. I, I think that perhaps we, we should have another cup of coffee. Another, another hour of coffee never hurt anybody. It never hurt anybody ever to spend two hours having a cup of coffee. It's, it's always good because you, you can stop, you can have a chat and you know things like that it's, it's very important that you you stop and you stop and relax and enjoy life a little bit every now and then so there we go we've got another another hour going by that's going to be about it hang on we're gonna we'll wait until it's gone three right it's just gone three o'clock uh great demand a transport company for sunflowers we have no sunflower at all but we are going to be getting 479 dollars per thousand liters for silage over here it's just a shame that great demand didn't suddenly bump up the price for the silage because that would have been absolutely wickedly cool. It didn't, so we, we will just uh, deal with that and we'll settle for our 479 per 1,000 litres. We've got 70,000 litres on board this lorry. Truck, truck. We're in South America. I should be calling it a truck. And we'll bring that one in round there. There we go. And there is the barn that we sell at. I'm not quite sure how they're going to fit 70,000 litres of silage into that barn, but um, I'm sure they will cope. I'm sure they'll do a wonderful job of it. Let's bring that back there. There we go. Right. And where's the, the, there's the tip button. There we go. We can tip. And we are... That's going all the way up, so this is the fast tip option rather than the slow tip option, which is you'd kind of need the fast tip option for this. That's one thing that I don't get. Those rams all the way back there. It doesn't make sense to me. That seems to be an unusual amount of pressure to put on the rams. And not only that, an unusual amount of pressure to put onto the entire trailer. You put a load of weight at the front. That's a long stretch. Anyway, $33,638, which isn't too shabby. I would, I would say that's not too shabby at all. Um, but still, it seems like a very, very long stretch on the actual trailer itself to put above the rams it's like that would um put a lot of pressure on that and you'd be inclined to have buckling a uh, body buckling on the actual trailer i don't know if that would be an issue is this based off of a real trailer um or is this one that they've just kind of uh, that they've made from scratch themselves because looking at it i genuinely think that that trailer there would be uh subject to quite an extreme amount of body buckle that's, that's just my opinion. I, I, anybody that knows about... Because I don't really have much to do with huge big trailers in real life. It's never something that I've had to deal with. So anybody that has had a lot of dealing with huge great big trailers, uh, would that be much of an issue for this trailer? Would you have concerns about body buckle on this particular one? You're going to have the, the, um, the body of the trailer sort of buckling up because of the extreme length of it that is above the rams there? Or is that not really something that would be uh, present much of an issue? Uh, I'm going to go that way. Actually, I'm going to go to this one and we will get this one set up ready for next episode. So my question for this week is, what do you want me to spend the money on? I've got loads of money and the money is increasing. We've got more silage to sell. We've got crops to sell. We've got other things to sell, uh, which means that the money is going to be increasing. We're getting more and more money. Do you want me to buy land or do you want me to buy machinery? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And also, please don't forget that this week I would very much appreciate it if you could, when you head into the comment section down below, uh, could you please tell me what it is you want me to buy? If you're asking me to buy machinery, what machines do you want? If you're saying buy land, 
what land is it you'd like to see me buying? Because, you know, th there's quite a lot of different options available. I need you to inform me as to which of those options you think would be the most suitable. That's all I got time for today. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.